Hello. It's been a little bit since I filmed. Um, Buster is just jumping into this video right off the bat. Part of the reason is because I have an iced coffee from McDonald's right where he can see it. And unfortunately, you can see Buster's having a bit of a bout with feline acne at the moment. We're treating it. It got really bad. It's so much better than it was. Aren't we, buddy? Yeah. Lots of face cleaning. Ridiculous. Okay, all right. Nobody wants to just watch you lick my cup the entire episode. At least I don't think you guys do. I only have... Oh, I do have something else to show you. Hold, please. Okay. <laughs> I had to go and get a finish off of the wall, actually. Okay. Let's show that first. So, you knew that I had finished um, Plum Street Sampler's Jack's Bash. And, of course, there's an ambulance going by. But you knew I had finished Jack's Bash last time, but I had give, uh, taken it to the framers. It's back. I love this frame because it's got this side detailing in addition to the, like, the, the inside detailing. And I feel like it really mirrors some of the colors and details in this as well. And this is a Michaels frame. I do my framing at Michaels. I think they do a pretty good job for the price, and they're fairly local for me. I drive like 15, 20 minutes down the road closer towards Atlanta to go to a, a Michaels that I really like. I just love how this turned out. I initially thought I wanted a black frame for this, but the more that I looked at it and I looked at the colors, and I decided that this warm tone was what I was going to go in and look for. And of course... I changed the verse, and if anyone is interested in that verse, I'm going to try to remember to put it on my Google Drive, and I'll put a link down below. Of course, this is probably going to go up on Sunday. I don't think I'll be able to, to get the link up until tomorrow, so. I really love this. It's hanging in our bedroom. I'm a big fan. I only worked on two things really this past month. One was At First Cox Crow by Blackbird Designs, which is in the sister's book. I started this on Halloween. I think I showed it to you guys the last time that I was here. Here are my threads. On this beautiful Thread drop, which I'm now obsessed with. Thank you, Brenda and Laura, for making me obsessed. Socks for Mom uh, made that thread drop. She has, she has an Etsy shop now. I think she transferred all of her stuff over there to make it easier. Okay, this is on a piece of XG Designs Old Linen, 36 count. My hope is to get this finished, probably not in 2020, but instead of doing like, you know me, this could change. <laughs> this could change tomorrow. This could change later today. But instead of new year, new start, I'm thinking of doing new year, new finishes. So I'm going to try to knock this out. And I'm going to try to knock out Leah Grinnell by Mary Wynn Farms, which is pretty close to being finished as well. I also, because of Laura, the serial starter, we both had kitted this and said that we would start it together like one day, but never really said when. Well, mine was kind of kitted. I fully kitted it. Speaking of fully kidding it as I throw threads in the floor because I'm currently working on this diligently. Okay. Me and the, the thread drops really do struggle a little. These look ratty because I've been using them like crazy for the past almost two weeks. It's on my frame. 
I'm finishing this. I'm not putting it down until, well, if I don't finish it by the day after Thanksgiving, can you guys hear him purring? Who's a happy boy? If I don't finish it by the day after Thanksgiving, when Meg and Stitching May and I are, are starting something, I'll put it down and then get back to it. But I'm hoping to finish this. So it gives me five days. Ugh, that may be pushing it because there's a lot of stitching left. Filling in this house and then around these words is completely filled in. But I got the hill filled in as of like 1.30 this morning. Didn't I, buddy? Jim and I stayed up watch, finishing the second season of Cobra Kai on Netflix because it's a terrible show and a wonderful show at the same time. It's so cheesy, but so 80s. So I'm working on that, and you see that's six minutes, and that's what I've done for the past month, which is why I also have a huge stack here on the other side of Buster, which are things that I either have kitted or am working on kitting for 2021. I'll show you that before this is over, but first I'll show you a little bit of stash. Me and Dana Bexton agreed to do a bag swap. She made me a bag, and I'm supposed to have mailed her a bag already, but I haven't. I'm so sorry, Dana. I'm working on it. She made me this awesome Lizzie Borden bag. Guys, look at that sparkle. How cool is that? And then it's got this fun um, skull. And then she gave me some more of these because she decided she didn't like them. These are a little bit different than the ones I usually use. These are actually pretty awesome. Look at that, buddy. Can you help me put threads on this? Yeah. He's also excited. Um, I ordered this piece of linen, which I believe is Lakeside... It's really plain. I got it from the Cottage Needle on Etsy. It's called like Vintage Cloudy Skies or something. I don't know. It's a really, really pale gray. Like really plain, but it's really pretty. So I got that. I have Buster entertain the people while I grab something else. So I've had this trivet and another one just like it for a while and I really want to pull bendy and stitch something to go in it. So I've got it narrowed down to these which I just purchased so that I as I fit, they have stitch counts that will fit. This is Thistle's Cookies House. Not a good picture but the threads it calls for are really pretty. And I really like the look of it, even though there is some back stitch in that border that goes around. So there's that. There's Black Cherry Tart. Plum Street Samplers. Which is a little smaller of a stitch count, but it's still gorgeous. And then this, which is Autumn Posy, which is Plum Street Samplers. Which uses some similar colors as Jack's Bash, so I should have most of them. So if you guys have a thought as to which one I should put in the stitch first to put in a tart, because I have more than one, or not in a tart, in a trivet, let me know. Cookie House, Black Cherry, Autumn Posy. So there's those. My Ann Morrison came which is the traditional stitches, stitch along exclusive that's supposed to start the stitch along on December 1st. I probably won't start it on December 1st, but I really wanted it. That's <laughs> which is why I just ordered the chart. It's really pretty. And this is celebrating their 20th anniversary. So let's put this here. 
This could also potentially fit in the trivet, you know, by all the blackbirds. When this chart first came out, I really didn't like it. Well, it's not that I didn't like it. I just, it didn't, didn't catch my eye. But now that I'm seeing people stitch it, I'm looking at it completely differently. The border is gorgeous. And I saw somebody do a conversion on Instagram where those pink flowers are more brown, like browns and oranges, like a rust tones, and it's so pretty. So we'll see. This may go in my stack to kit for 2021. More Blackbird. Uh, this one Megan got from Tracy P's D stash, and she was like, you know, maybe if you have this one too, we could do a sow one day. Well, you know, I didn't have it, but I didn't tell her that. Except for now, I just did. So now I have it. This one, I remember when it came out, looking at it and thinking, there is no freaking way. And now I look at it and think, I need, I need to stitch that. I need to stitch this. I need to kit this. I need to have it ready to go. I, I, I need, I need it. <laughs> and I was thinking, you know, it's going to cover up most of the fabric, so you don't need anything really fancy. Maybe it would be pretty on this, this like side gray color. Yeah, no, yes, no. So anyway, I'm putting those two together because that's a maybe. Okay, you go there because I'm talking about you in a second. I ordered these three from the same Etsy seller because I was pre-ordering one and then if you added on a little, you got free shipping. So that's what I did. I pre-ordered this. This is Teresa Kogut's character. It's a lot of solid stitching. It's a lot of solid stitching. But it says, character is like a tree and reputation like a shadow. The shadow is what we think of it. The tree is the real thing. I don't know. I just really liked it. I'm not going to stitch it immediately, so I don't know why I was in such a hurry to pre-order it. That's your ones in my lap. But I needed it, so I have it. I also, while I was on there, I picked up this, the Lucky 13 coverlet by, it says Modern Organics from Summer House Stitchworks. Sometimes you just need a nice, soothing, repetitive stitch. So it's nice to have stuff like this in your stash. Right now that Carolyn Manning is filling that need for me, so I haven't pulled it out in a while. And then a few people started this, and I think somebody finished it. I'm terrible at remembering who's working on what or who finished what. But this is Hannah Hurd, 1854. Really pretty little sampler. This sampler just came out. Brenda and Laura showed it. Um, somebody else sent me a photo of it and asked if I had seen it. Anyway, it's amazing. I ordered it as soon as I was alerted to it. This is A Sister Remembered Agnes Wardrop circa 1826 by Mary Wind Farm. And basically, if I'm remembering reading the inside correctly, Agnes started the sampler, and it was her sampler she was doing, and then she died at 19 years old. So her sister finished it and put in here, Agnes Wardrop died in her 19th year. And it has a giant house on it, so I need that. I think I went outside my comfort zone and did the pink that was called for in the Plum Street Samplers piece, Sweetheart Hill, that I'm working on. So I don't know if I can do the pink in this. We'll see. Anyway, that's my haul. Now we're going to jump into stash and plans. This Friday, today's Sunday, so this Friday, the Friday after Thanksgiving, the American Thanksgiving, Megan and I 
are starting from this book, but it's also, um, this is by totally eluding me. I will put a link down below. Threadwork Primitives, I believe, is the designer, although strangely I don't see it right on the page with this, which is unfortunate for the designer. So this is, I believe it's called Christmas Tide by Threadworks Primitives, if you look it up on Etsy, and you can get a copy of it there. You can see it up close. I'm just showing you the chart. If you can stitch it from that, have at it. There's no way you can stitch it from that. I know people are going to yell and complain, but whatever. Um, so order a copy from Etsy or track down this book. And when you get it from Etsy, there is a DMC conversion. I am using the called for uh, overdyes, which I had almost all of in stash and then grabbed a couple more. I think I'm missing one, but I think Megan has it, and we're going to do a little leaving threads in her mailbox trade as I, uh, she lives just north of me. It's really nice. Starting that on Friday. I'm planning way ahead for my birthday in March. March will be one year since the pandemic, like, blew up here in the U.S. I know official first cases were reported in other places before March, but we started shutting down and quarantining here where I am March 13th, Friday the 13th. So this pattern was released recently as a free pattern because Christy Stephenson or Sarcy Girl on Instagram is amazing. She is giving us this chart for free she is encouraging people to make donations to local shelters. I believe it was specifically shelters. Rather than pay for this chart, make a donation. I thought I wanted to do it on that gray. I had a piece of slightly lighter gray in my stash, a piece of lakeside tarnished silver. It had a little bit of a blue tone to it when I put the threads on it. Here are the threads. They're gorgeous. This is all DMC. I, I love all of them. And I was going through planning yesterday and I found this piece of linen in my stash. It's feeling kind of perfect. It's kind of brown, it's kind of green. I can't explain the color to you well because it's one I dyed myself. This is the piece that I had originally started Portuguese Bird on. In fact, it's still on there. I, but when I started Portuguese Bird, it was a piece of PTP Valor. And I just really didn't like it, so I overdyed it. I think I can get away with this on 30. You could put it, I believe, on 36 count on a fat quarter, but you wouldn't have huge margins, if I'm remembering my calculations correctly. This is a fat half, so I have more than enough. So, like, I'll put it on this half and maybe do this or something when I'm cutting it. So it's going to be about this big. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. I am starting this on March 1st. Because it's a great start for my birthday. It's a great way to acknowledge that it's been a year. And that we're still dealing with this and all of the people who have passed away and all of the sacrifices that have been made and so forth and so on. So that's what I'm doing and I'm sure there will be a witty hashtag at some point. But if you want to do this with me, 
Sarcy Girl is on Instagram. I will try to figure out a way to link, and like I said, I do better with links the day after, uh, a way to link to her Google Drive where you can download this chart for free. Donate to your local shelter. I don't always do cash donations to my local shelter. Um, what I am planning on doing because a good friend of mine is actually over our local homeless shelter and she said, Emily, we always need underwear, new underwear. People come into the homeless shelter and I mean, they, they need new underwear. So I'm probably going to go to Target or Walmart or order from Amazon and just order a box of underwear and take it to my local shelter because they're in constant need. So if you like the idea of giving something physical as opposed to monetary, I had never thought about it before, but it makes perfect sense that that's something they would need. Stuff that's kitted. We all know my phone doesn't like to go over like 32, 33 minutes. It is what it is. So if I don't make it through all of this, this is going to be two videos. I have bought a new phone, but I don't have a case for it yet, so I don't want to doom it right away and transfer over to it without my case, which is on its way to being shipped to me. So anyway, without further delay, I love to plan. I love to kit. I like the idea of having a shelf of things that if the mood strikes me, is ready to go. I don't have all the threads for this, and that's part of the point of me doing this, is I'm going through, and I haven't done this for all of these, but I'm going through and pulling from stash to see what threads I have and what threads I need. So I can just grab a few here and there and it won't be such a financial hardship. I want to start Halloween Eve and these are the threads that I have so far there's a pretty long list of threads in this one so these are the ones I have so far I'm working on it it's a pretty plain fabric that it's on so I will probably go with a pretty pretty, pretty plain fabric you've already seen this one this is going on my shelf that's kitted up and ready to go whenever the mood strikes me. Some of these, like I said, you have already seen. Mary Argent. This is the Country Sample Kit. Will I change out the fabric? Maybe. I know Nicole is doing hers on a piece of vintage exemplar. I have a piece of vintage exemplar. Hers looks amazing. I might switch, we'll see. The called for is a Zweigart vase of Weeks Dye Works straw, which is a really pretty fabric, but we'll see. Whenever the day the mood strikes me to start this, we'll see. Uh, these have been in my stash for quite some time. And I've decided that I really want to be one of the cool kids and have something seasonal that I can switch out. So maybe it will have a magnet on the back. Maybe it will be a frame that I can switch things in and out of. But I want to do these filigram mountains. I've had these for forever. There's winter, spring, summer, and autumn. They have fairly short thread lists that they call for on the back. And they call for gentle arts. So they're going to be really pretty. And I pulled this piece of Nancy Turner fabric, Victorian motto. This is Shadows, 36 count, to do these on. I thought it would be really pretty, kind of similar to what it looks like they are on already. All the colors will look good on this. So yeah, I want to grab the threads for these. 
whenever I decide, maybe start on the next season, whatever time of year it is, so maybe I can just jump in. <sighs> this is pretty new to me. It's not a new chart at all. I've loved it and wanted it for a long time, and it's time I stitched it. This is Lucy Bean's Rabbit House. I bought this from her Etsy shop. I think that's one of the, the few places I've seen this particular one. It's a lot of solid stitching, which apparently I'm obsessed with, but I freaking love it. So I'm gonna pull the threads for this, which is Gentle Arts threads in like one week's, and get this kitted up where I can start it whenever I want. These two from Not Forgotten Farm. Mr. Reverend Gordon Squash Bottom and the Halloween Queen. They need to be kitted and ready to go on a moment's notice because they're amazing. I had to had to have this one at the market. Was this market 2020 or was this market 2019? Anyway, this is Hannah Peniston. That's how I'm pronouncing it. 1830. She is very bright. I am going to antique her. So it's going to be a slow kitting up process to antique her. Um, right now, I know I want the grass to be deep forest. So I've tossed about five, four or five Gentle Art Deep Forests in there. I'll get her kitted. She's also, I've got a piece of um, Nancy Turner's Victorian Motto Vintage Sampler in here, 36 count, to stitch this on. Gonna kit it up, have it ready to go. This I need to kit with DMC. I want to start this. Um, I would like to get a lot more done on a peacock, a unicorn, and a badger before I start this, but I want to have this ready. I'm going to dull the blue a little, and but I love all the other colors as is. And I have earmarked for this because there's a lot of full coverage in the middle, but you can see the fabric in the sky and in that border. So I wanted something that's pretty but subtle. So I pulled a piece of picture this plus bramble, which is pretty and subtle. Anniversaries of the heart. We've all seen it. We all know what it is. I pulled a piece of fabric to start it on. This is under the sea fabrics selkie so that you're not confused as to what this fabric looks like. And I believe all of the call for colors will pop on this, but I'm going to be super flexible with the call for colors. For example, in this first block, <clears throat> I, I know it's supposed to be icy. I know it's supposed to be January and like snow, but I'm gonna have to figure out a darker color that still feels that way to me for that border because I want it to show up better. So I'll be working on that. Maybe like a smoky blue, as, I don't know. I don't know. Here in Georgia, we have mud through the winter, so maybe a nice mud color. Buster's just uh, still laying here and purring. Okay, this is definitely going to end up being two videos. So I tracked this down, and now it's going to be one of the charts available in their new book that's coming out. So if you're looking for this, worry not, fear not, it is going to be released again as a part of that book. So... I wanted to do this on something a little different 
but not like, I know Kelly did hers on hot pink. It looks amazing, Kelly, but we all know I'm not a hot pink fabric girl. So I'm thinking about doing it on some gingerbread by Picture This Plus. I've got this piece left over and it won't take all of this from where I started that Hands Across the Sea chart, that little gem. So yeah, I think that's gonna go on there. This may get started and knocked out one day before 2020 is over. Because I joked that these broom riders were giant plague rats. I pulled a couple of scraps to maybe do this on. I think this is a piece of scrap of legacy. This is a scrap of a limited edition piece. I may do it on this one. It's different. This is a color and cotton limited edition Halloween box piece that I didn't need this bottom piece for the sampler I did on it. So this has been chopped off. I'll show you this one and then we'll break in between videos. I bought this because I wanted some little Halloween smalls for to do little tiny pillows. So this will be easy to kit up because it's just DMC, but I found this piece of murky, this, you know, you end up with these scraps when you start things, these pieces. So it's a really evenly modeled piece of murky. Is this murky? Guys, this isn't murky. This is the piece that I dyed for the sampler that I'm working on, whose name eludes me, Agnes something, with the deer and the girl watering the flowers. So, but yeah, no, that's perfect. That's going to look good. I do have murky though, if I decide to do that. I know I've got a couple of scraps upstairs. But that'll be perfect. So I'm going to pause here and then I'll record again and I'll try to get them uploaded at the same time. See you in the next video.